What's up, guys? This is the Awesome Night Shift podcast talking about some MLB for Wednesday, April 25th. We've got two slates. This is your host, Jake Hari, a fellow Awesome writer. You may know me from doing the MLB strategy pod in the morning with Josh Engelman and just got done doing the live stream with Chris Spagnolo. So, been around at Osmo for a, a little while. I did this yesterday, so I hope you guys are making some money. Uh, just going to go through quickly on both of these slates, and most of the stuff I refer to will be DraftKings related just because I'm mostly playing on DraftKings, so the slates may be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to look at FanDuel to see if they're the same. Oh, they're, they're actually the same for today, so we're going to get two four-game slates um, Wednesday morning. And those two weird start times, the Twins-Yankees and the Braves-Reds, will not be on either slate. So that's nice that they uh, they linked those up. Let's get into each game a little bit. <clears throat> um, so we're going to go with LA and Houston first. We've got Nick Tropiano on the mound. He's got a 40% hard contact rate against righties and lefties this year. And that's not great news against the Astros hitters. There's You could definitely stack up the Astros here. No issue against that. I was on Tropiano um, his first start. And then since then, I've been sort of off of him just because um, I don't know that that first start is what we're going to see from Tropiano. But against the Astros here... He's 4,900, but I do not do not like his odds to have a good start here. So Springer, <clears throat> Correa, um, Altuve is hitting better. Josh Reddick, U- Yuli Gurriel. These are all guys that I want to use. And even um, Brian McCann. He's 3,400 on DK. Um, so, I mean, you can stack up the Astros. They've got a total around five. And keep in mind, this is very early. Um, so... Things might change. You might see a little bit of lineup differentiation for the Astros or for any team. Um, Justin Verlander on the other side. It's it's a really tough matchup here for him against the Angels. Um, I don't know that I necessarily want to use him for 12K. That is quite the price tag when you can pay up for $1,100 more for Max Scherzer on this slate. So Verlander for me is is not where I'm going. I certainly understand the play. Morton was in the same spot, and Morton's start is not over yet. Um, it actually hasn't even started at this time of recording, so um, I don't know exactly how that went, but it's sort of a similar spot as Morton was on Tuesday. So it's just a tough matchup, and prefer Max Scherzer. I'm not really going out of my way to target bats against Verlander, but if I had to choose one, it might be Louis Valbuena for 3200 if he's in the lineup batting fifth or sixth, this is a guy that I always like to use against righties. And Verlander, I mean, again, I'm not looking to target bats against him, but it's a short slate. You might need to get a leverage bat or two in there against one of these top pitchers if you're not playing them. So that would be the guy I'd look at. Let's go to Seattle and the Chicago White Sox. And we might see another White Sox stack here. Uh, Felix Hernandez under 10% swinging strike rate in all five of his starts. 35% hard contact. Those are two things that make me want to stack against him. Um, really like Yohan Mancata. Just been crushing everything. He's just absolutely on fire. And um, I'm going to ride out the hot streak. I mean, I think he's good for other reasons besides the hot streak. I think he matches up well with Hernandez regardless. But... Yohan Mancato, one of my favorite plays on this early slate. Um, Jose Abreu for 4,200 is a guy that can hit righties. He did the other night, two home runs. Um, But Wellington Castillo, uh, Matt Davidson, Nicky Delmonico, all these guys. I really like the White Sox stack. I think that total is too low once again. We've got, looks like some wind blowing out to right. So if that's going to be thing then I like the White Sox even more especially Mancana Mancato Yoan Mancata and um Nikki Delmonico easy for me to say so I like the stack against Felix Hernandez I don't want to use Felix Hernandez um Shields is Shields 
he's 4,600, so a little bit enticing, but that run total, I think, is going to be enough to get me off of him. Um, I do like Robinson Cano and Kyle Seeger a ton, especially if we get that wind blowing out to right. It is James Shields. He can give up the long ball at any given moment. And then Mitch Hanniger has been crushing against both hands. He's 4K, uh, batting six. It's righty-righty matchup, but certainly looking to play him here. So I love the three through six, assuming it's Cano, Cruz, Seager, and Hanniger. <clears throat> so a little bit of a game stack here, actually, if you're not going to Coors. And Coors will be the next game I'll talk about. Um, Tyson Ross is one of my favorite guys in the league to stack against. He cannot hold runners. He gives up a ton of hard contact, cannot miss bats. Um, outside of his last start, he had seven and two thirds innings pitched. 10 Ks in his last start, but this is Coors Field, and I certainly do not want to play Tyson Ross in Coors Field off, off of one good start. So the Colorado bats that I like here are Blackman, LeMayhew, Nolan Arenado, David Dahl, if he's in the lineup for 3,500, is too cheap. Um, yeah, so Rocky Stack, the, the SP2 is going to be really tough on this slate. Um, I honestly don't even know where I'd want to go for an SP2 outside of John Gray, who is 6,600. And yeah, I don't like playing pitchers and Coors, but I think Gray might even be the chalk on this slate because everyone's going to want to play Rockies bats. And he's a good pitcher. He's had some success at Coors. Um, there really just isn't much to choose from. And there are a bunch of righties in this lineup that he can strike out even at Coors. So guys like Will Myers, Manuel Margot, Jose Perella, they all K quite a bit against righties, Austin Hedges. So I'm recommending a pitcher in Coors, John Gray. And it's it's mostly a price thing. If he was like 8K, then I'd probably just go with like Samarja or someone. But I think Gray is actually my second favorite pitcher outside of Scherzer on this slate. Um, <clears throat> so Hosmer has a pretty good matchup. However, he did go on medical, family medical leave, so I'm not sure if he's going to be in the lineup. And then I don't really love a ton of bats against Gray if if Hosmer's not in the lineup. So I think that's sort of my stand I'm taking on this game, playing Rockies and then pitching John Gray if if I can. Uh, last game of this early slate, <clears throat> we've got Max Scherzer. He's got an over 37% K rate against both righties and lefties this year. So I just I love the matchup here against the Giants. I've talked about how much I like targeting pitchers against the Giants. It's just going to be a matter of him versus Coors Field bats unless you pay down really far with Shields or Tropiano, maybe even some Gray in there. Um, I like Gray and then maybe a few Coors bats if I can fit them. Giants bats, um, just not going to them. I'm playing Scherzer if I'm playing this slate. And then... Samarja, he's viable for 7,500 on DK. It's a low run total. It's a good park for pitching. And Samarja's been okay. I'm not expecting big things out of him here. So he, he's just viable. That's that's all I have for him. I don't have a strong take either way. You can certainly target a Bryce Harper or a Ryan Zimmerman or a Matt Adams against him, even in a bad park. So that'll do it for the early slate. It's pretty ugly. You kind of got to choose between Coors and some of the stud pitchers. And I really want Scherzer in my lineup. I think he's by far the best pitcher on that slate. And then I will work back from there. I'm um, skipping the Minnesota game and the Atlanta-Cincinnati game. We'll go on to the main slate. We've got John Lester versus Trevor Bauer. Uh, I don't really have a ton of interest in either of these pitchers, but I also don't really want to stack against either of them. If I was stacking against one of them, it would be Lester just because of his propensity to allow stolen bases. We know about his history of not being able to throw over to first. Um, Jose Ramirez is a guy that can definitely take advantage of that. Francisco Lindor as well. Um, and then I like Edwin Encarnacion, just lefty against righty there. The Chicago Bats... I'm not crazy about either, but I guess Anthony Rizzo would be a guy that I'd look at. The weather here does not look good, 45 degrees. Bauer, if he was a little bit cheaper, I think I'd have more interest in him. Can get wild at times, and so I just 
I don't love him against the Cubs, who are a good hitting team, even though they have a low total. Detroit at Pittsburgh. We've got Matt Boyd looking like he's going to get the start against Jamison Tyon. Um, Boyd has allowed just one earned run in each of his three starts, going six, six and a third, and seven innings pitched. Um, I don't really want to use him against Pittsburgh. The swing strike rate isn't somewhere that I'm in love with. And also, Pittsburgh's a really tough matchup, or at least it has been for pitchers early in the season. Just very disciplined team. Um, don't make a lot of mistakes. But the Pittsburgh bats, you're mostly scared of the lefties, Polanco, um, or the switch hitters, Josh Bell. I like him better from the left side, Dickerson. So I don't really love a bunch of Pittsburgh bats here either. Maybe a Starlin Marte or Sean Rodriguez, if he's leading off for 2700 is a little bit interesting. Jameson Tyon had a rough outing against Philadelphia in his last start, but I'm not really going to him here against all these righties. Just not getting enough whiffs and swinging strikes for 9,100. Uh, for Detroit Bats, I think Castellanos or Miguel Cabrera would be the two guys that I'm looking at, but I just have not played a bunch of Detroit Bats in this season, and I don't see myself really doing that here. Let's go to Tampa Bay and Baltimore. Um, all right. Tampa Bay and Baltimore. We've got, well, it looks like we don't know exactly who's going to be pitching. I have Archer versus, um, versus Dylan Bundy, but that game did get rained out um, on Tuesday. So if they're just going to go with Faria and Cobb today, that's, um, you know, I would have a little bit of interest in Faria against the um, swing happy Orioles team. But this game, regardless of who's pitching, I don't really have a ton of interest in bats. Um, but if it's Bundy and Archer, then I love both of them. Archer has a swing strike rate, looks great. Um, top 15 in wisp for swing this year, and we know Baltimore is top two in swing strike rate, O swing percentage, and swing percentage on the year. So love Archer if he's pitching. Bundy, same thing. If he's going, I love him here. I think these might be two out of my three or maybe three or four favorite pitchers on the slate if they go. So if they don't go, I'm going to have to find some, some other pitchers I like because I would really like Bundy and Archer in these spots. So just something to keep an eye on. We should know what is going on with the pitching by the morning show that I do with Josh. All right, Arizona and Philadelphia. We've got Granke and Arietta on the mound. There are weather concerns in this game, so I'm not going to talk a ton about pitching. I would like Granke quite a bit if the weather looks fine, kind of like Robbie Ray on Tuesday. Um, Arietta was spectacular in his last start, but if there's weather concerns here, I don't expect a repeat performance. Although 8,500 is not the worst price in the world um, for a team that's opening with a 3.5 total. So the bats I like here, not really any for Philadelphia, and then maybe uh, Descalso or Alex Avila for Arizona. Let's go to Boston and Toronto. We've got Eduardo Rodriguez against Aaron Sanchez. When Rodriguez is on, he's really, really tough to hit. He's been very good in his first three starts. 19.3% swinging strike rate uh, against the Angels, which, and that was in his last start, which is very, very tough to do. Uh, I definitely think he's viable here. He's going to get a handful of righties, maybe all righties in that Toronto lineup. But, um, like I said, when he's on, he's very, very tough to hit. So, um, I do like Eduardo Rodriguez quite a bit. Let me see if I can find this game on the sheet. Um, it's not showing up, so now i got to check to see if this game is, for some reason, not on the slate or if I'm just seeing things. Um, bear with me here. All right, yeah, so Boston and Toronto is on the slate. It's just not on the sheet that I'm looking at. So, good. Um, so, I do have some interest in Rodriguez 
Um, he'll probably be pretty chalky, but really good at limiting hard contact this year, 23%. So that's something I love to see from Rodriguez. He's, a, he's always going to struggle with walks. And if you put guys on base, like Smoke will make you pay and, and Russell Martin can make you pay. But I do like Rodriguez quite a bit here. Aaron Sanchez had a couple nice starts at the beginning of the year, but he's been pretty bad. Um, I'm sorry, he has not been pretty bad. He's got a pretty bad matchup is what I have in my notes here against the Red Sox. Um, just a really tough team to go against right now, unless you're Sean Manaya and you just go out and no-hit the best team in baseball. Um, Sanchez is really good at limiting hard contact, though. So I don't really want to blindly stack against against Boston. Um, he's got an under 26% hard contact this year. So I guess Mookie Betts or Benintendi, maybe a J.D. Martinez would be guys that I'd consider as one-offs, but not looking to stack against Aaron Sanchez. Miami and the Dodgers. Trevor Richards on the mound versus $14,000 Clayton Kershaw. Wow, that is quite the price for Kershaw. I mean, you know what you're getting out of him. He's a fantastic play. The Marlins have a 2.3 run total as of now. And yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of K's in that lineup for left-handed pitching. Like, I think he pitches really well here. If you can fit him in, I think he's the highest raw points pitcher on the slate. And I don't think it's particularly close, but you got to take into account his price. So more on that tomorrow. Um, Richards, on the other hand, 41.9% hard contact, uh, swinging strike rate, it, 8.6%. He's getting hit hard by both sides. So I love the Dodgers bats here. Again, um, Grandal, Seager, and Bellinger. Jack Peterson, if he's in the lineup. Um, all these guys, man. Chris Taylor, a 1-5 through five stack is firmly, firmly in play for the Dodgers and maybe one of my favorites of the night. I think they give our buddy Clayton Kershaw quite a bit of run support here against Trevor Richards. Let's go to Oakland at Texas, and this is Kendall Graveman against Doug Fister. Um, not the pitching matchup of the year, so I'm not really looking at either of the pitchers here. Fister has a 52% hard contact rate against lefties this year. Jed Lowry may be one of my favorite plays of the slate, and you see $4,600 Jed Lowry. Maybe a year or two ago, you're, you're fading that easily, but man, this guy has been awesome, and... I really want to play Lowry. I want to play Matt Olson, And I'm not scared of going with these righties against Fister either. So Chris Davis can definitely be using a stack. Matt Joyce, if he's leading off for 3500 that is just too cheap for Joyce if he's going to be leading off. So I love the Oakland stack on the other side. Got to like some Rangers as well. Against Kendall Graveman, just cannot miss any bats. Looks like we got some wind blowing out to right, so that bodes well for a guy like Joey Gallo and Nomar Mazara, Shin Tzu Chu for 3,600. These guys are all definitely in play. I do think I prefer the Oakland stack a little bit more. Um, really, really keying in on Joey Gallo for 4,100 and then Mazara and Chu, but those are three outfielders. Um, I guess Gallo's first base and outfield eligible, but you get the point there. I don't want to use up all my outfield spots on just the Texas game. I think there are quite a few good spots tonight. All right, Mets and Cardinals. So this is the game I thought we were going to get last night. Um, so we're going to get Steven Matz versus an unknown pitcher for St. Louis. So you're going to have to do your own run through on the uh, St. Louis pitcher, whoever goes for them, and Milwaukee bats. It might be Waka. But if it is, that's not really a guy that, that does much for me. I like targeting the lefties against him. Um, Milwaukee bats. Like, if it's a righty pitcher, if it's Waka going for St. Louis, then fire up Christian Yelich if you can. Fire up Jay Bruce. Fire up Michael Conforto. as Drupal Cabrera. Man, like, um, oh, did I say Yelich? Um, yeah, so this is this is Mets Cardinals. So I'm, I don't know what I'm doing with Yelich there, but... Um, fire up all the, the Mets lefties. Um, I really like him here against Waka if he goes. The only problem is there's no pitcher listed, but looking at like ESPN, 
they have Waka listed for today's slate. So I'm just going to go with that. Steven Matz, uh, and we'll talk about Yelich in a second once we get to the last game of the night. Steven Matz has a 30% K rate this year. Um, thought we were getting this matchup on Tuesday. 7.4% swinging strike rate on the year. Not getting any whiffs. His BABIP shows that he's kind of been a fraud. Um, so I'm going full on St. Louis stack here. Jose Martinez, one of my favorite plays of this slate as I'm looking at it right now. Yadi Molina crushing lefties. I think he has an over 60% hard contact rate against lefties this season. Granted, small sample, but Mats cannot hold guys on. So I think these guys get on pretty easily. Ozuna has not been great, but I'm using him here for 3,900, or at least I want to use him. Definitely would be a guy I would get exposure to if I was multi-entering. Tommy Pham for 4,700. I'm more than comfortable paying up for that. Dexter Fowler. I think Pham and Fowler have a good chance to steal a base or two here against Mats, and Cardinals might be my favorite stack of the night when you take into account their power and a little bit of their speed against Mats. Um, I would not talk myself into Mats at 6,500. Um, and I think some people might just because they think he's good and um, I don't even know, but I'm certainly not on Mats here. Something would have to really change for me to, to even be off the Cardinals stack. Probably my favorite play of the entire night. All right, last game of the night. This is the, the Christian Yelich game. Um, we got Chase Anderson with the reverse splits for the Brewers and then Jason Hamill for the Royals. So Anderson has a 40% hard hit rate and 15% K rate against righties this year. He's always been a guy that's had these reverse splits. Um, so outside of like Jorge Soler, I don't really think that the Royals are going to make him pay. Um, I don't know. It's just... I don't really like playing Royals. I would love Solaire against a lefty, but it looks like it's going to be... Well, now that I'm refreshing the page, it looks like it's going to be Chassin on this page. So either way, I'm not really targeting against the... Or I'm not really targeting Royals batters. But if it's Chassin for 4,900 in a pitcher's park, that's at least a little bit interesting. Um, let's see what DraftKings has for their pitcher. Oh, they've got Chassin as the projected starter. So for 4,900, I guess you could talk me into some Ulysse Chassin. That's just a really, really cheap price for a game in which he'll be favored and going up against Jason Hamill. And I love the Brewers bats. So a little bit of a correlation play, kind of like how I like to do with my skaters and my goalie in hockey, it is not the same thing, but um, something I might consider here if I want to pay up for a ton of bats, and mainly it's those St. Louis guys for me, and then some of these Brewers as well. Hamels is getting pounded by lefties, near 50% hard contact. He's top 10 in average exit velocity against lefties this season. The Brewers can tee off on him here, and I'm going right back to Christian Yelich. I'm going right back to Travis Shaw and Thames. But I'm not also avoiding guys like um, Ryan Braun and Lorenzo Cain. They're certainly in play. Even Jonathan VR at 3,400 is a guy that, that I have some interest in. Um, so let me just, let me just uh, rehash this, do a little summary. For pitchers, I'm on um, Bundy and Archer if they go. If they do not go, then I will be a little bit sad. But it looks like... Um, I honestly do not know who's pitching. So if it's not Archer, I would, would have some interest in Faria. And then um, Erod, Eduardo Rodriguez, Clayton Kershaw for 14000 The only problem is the price, and it's usually the problem with Kershaw. Um, he probably gets you 25, 30 DK points here pretty easily against these Marlins. Um, as far as other pitchers go... Man, there's not a lot to like if Bundy and Archer are not going to be in the slate for me. So, stacks, I like the Dodgers quite a bit. I like the a the A's, um, the Rangers. Definitely love the cards. The cards are my favorite stack as of now. 
Um, and then the Brewers, I do like to stack them up as well against Jason Hamill. So I hope that gave you a little bit of a quick run through on both slates. Um, the early slate's a little bit ugly. Main slate seems like we've got a lot of hitting options. The pitching options may be a little bit tough. So look out for the spotlight pitchers, the spotlight hitters, and the spotlight stacks articles that we do each morning. Um, check out mine and Josh's uh, MLB strategy video that we do each morning. A lot of good information there. You see Josh's sort of projections. He walks you through some MME stuff, and he's got the spreadsheets for sure. Um, yeah, so we've got a playline contest on. Uh, well, we've got a contest on playline. I should say it is called the Awesomeo.com presents one million dollar perfect line bonus. It is twenty five hundred dollars guaranteed. Uh, so yeah, get in that, um, and we will talk more about the slate tomorrow morning. We'll have a ton of content coming your way, as always, MLB and NBA. There's only one NHL game on Wednesday, so maybe some showdown talk. Um, but yeah, enjoy the slate. Hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we will see you in the morning.